Hey, Angel here for MyNextTablet.com. Today with an unboxing of the Honor Play gaming smartphone. Um, I'm just coming from the official launch event, from the international launch event here in Berlin. I think it's already available in China and India, right? But now it will be available in Europe as well, starting at 300 29 euros and yeah the media already got their review unit and i have it here and now we want to unbox this gaming smartphone to take a closer look at it and yeah get some first impressions of it so let's start this unboxing again it's a gaming smartphone and quite inexpensive at 329 euros let's put the phone to the side first to see what else is inside the box here and as usual we are getting a little case. I think that's the case with pretty much all Huawei smartphones, right? Usually even the cheaper ones. So it's a th see-through little cover here. Um, then we've got a standard SIM eject tool. And then we've got the power plug, Huawei quick charging. That's what it says here. And it looks like just any other Huawei power plug. And then just a standard USB type C to type A cable. So we've got a USB Type-C port, but that nowadays is a standard as well. And what I'm noticing is there are no headphones inside. Um, yeah, I think that is the case with the Huawei P10, P20 and so on. They should have headphones, right? I'm sure they do, but this one doesn't. But well, it's a lot cheaper as well. Now, let's take a look at the phone itself. And in fact, I already set it up and played with it a bit and yeah, what you're noticing here is a screen with a notch. It's a 6.3 inch display with an aspect ratio of 19.5 by 9. So it's a lot taller or higher than a smartphone with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Again, 6.3 inches and it has kind of a full HD resolution. It's a bit higher. It's 2340 by 1080. So the resolution on the top here on the long end is a bit higher than standard full HD. You're seeing the notch here and it's a bit higher. So there will be some apps that are not optimized for that yet. But we've seen this kind of design with um, quite a lot of smartphones in the last year. So yes, there are more and more apps that support notches and so on. And Android itself it does too, right? So yeah. That's the screen. We've got a 16 megapixel front facing camera over there. Then obviously an earpiece on the bottom. We just have the Honor logo. There's no fingerprint scanner. And you can see the bezel is quite thin. We've got a small bezel here and a yeah, small chin on the bottom here. On the back, we've got a full aluminum body and you already, already see the color that I have. Um, this is called ultraviolet. Huawei is or Honor is also offering it in black and blue and there are two special editions. One is red which looks really nice and the other one is black again but with like um, red accents. It looks really nice. Um, it's a bit more expensive though but not that much. Um, yeah so the design is quite nice. It's a full metal body so no wireless charging but it feels high-end and yeah, it's pretty good. Let's go around it a bit. We've got a 16 megapixel back camera as well. So the same resolution on both sides. And we've got a depth camera and an LED flashlight over there. Then we've got a fingerprint scanner. Um, yeah, as I said, it's not on the front, it's on the back. Like we are used to from the first Huawei made smartphones, for example. And I believe LG had it as well. Anyway, some nowadays have it on the front, which I'm not a huge fan of. So yeah, it's nice to have it on the back. It's just easy, um, if you're grabbing it, easy to unlock. This does support facial unlocking as well, so face recognition. But I really prefer fingerprint readers on smartphones and on tablets. On this side, we've got a power button, a volume rocker, um, nothing on the top except another microphone. Then we've got a dual SIM slot on the side and one of those doubles as a micro SD card reader as well. And those can be up to 256 gigabyte in size. In size. Then we've got a headphone jack on the bottom, a USB type C connector port and a standard speaker, one single speaker. So yeah, only one speaker here. And that's pretty much it. Now we can take a look inside kind of there's a high silicon Kirin 
970 octa core chipset inside with 8 cores in total and 4 of those can clock at up to 2.4 gigahertz. And I already ran a couple of benchmarks and you can see that in Geekbench 4 it gets 1899 in the single core test and 6598 points in the multi-core test. And in Antutu it gets a very nice result of over 206,000. And that is very similar to the Huawei P20 for example, which has the same chipset. In addition to that, we get 4 gigabytes of RAM and there's also a 6 gigabyte RAM version. And I think the 64 gigabyte internal storage are in standard, are a standard in all versions. So the chipset is about a year old already. I think it was introduced just a year ago, um, almost exactly a year ago at IFA. They are about to announce the next generation. And yeah, the chipset is quite powerful. I already played Players Unknown Battlegrounds Mobile. This is a gaming smartphone, so I had to try that game out, um, especially since Huawei is kind of working together with them at least a bit. And Players Unknown Battlegrounds Mobile runs very nicely on here at very high graphic settings, which is certainly nice. And the Honor Play supports something called GPU Turbo, and that's a new technology that Huawei is putting into the phones and Honor is putting into the phones. And with that, apparently according to their marketing, um, the performance is improved, but it's also, especially gaming, is said to be more stable, like the frame rate is more stable, and it should save a bit of battery life. Um, I'm not sure if that is true. I just played with it a bit and I didn't have the chance to test that yet. And um, yeah, to get really reliable results, it has to be tested quite a bit. Um, I already saw a YouTube video where they said that it does not work. It does not do pretty much anything. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure. I really have to try that out. Um, and it probably also depends on the game. It might have to be optimized for GPU Turbo. Anyway, um, that's about the performance. Now let's take a look at the software. And on here, once Android 8.1 Oreo, let's quickly confirm that in the settings and it, and it indeed is Android 8.1 Oreo, so no Android Pie yet. And on the top of it, like usual, runs the Emotion UI, the eMui in version 8.2. And that one, again, looks almost identical to other recent smartphones from Huawei and Honor. Not just recent smartphones, smartphones from the last three, four years, they all look pretty similar. There's a lot to customize like usual. Out of the box, all apps are installed onto the home screen directly, but in the settings you can activate an app drawer and um, you can also change the design a bit. There's really a lot you can customize and yeah, I always recommend to go through uh, most of the settings to see what you like or what not. And as you're seeing here already, there are really a lot of apps pre-installed. There's a file manager, a notes app, their own email app, a calendar, a clock, um, there's a calculator, a weather app, a flashlight app, a sound recorder, a mirror app, which basically is the front facing camera, right? Um, yeah, calculator, a compass. Um, there are a lot of games here pre-installed. There are a lot of apps like booking.com and eBay and Netflix pre-installed. Um, Facebook is pre-installed. I'm noticing there are no Microsoft apps pre-installed, which usually is the case with the tablets, but maybe not on their phones. But obviously we have the Google apps and we've got a phone manager and there you can um, yeah, have some overview over your mobile data and so on. But also go to the battery and start a power saving mode or an ultra power saving mode. And you can also set it so that the phone automatically adjusts the resolution to save a bit of battery life. Um, that's what you can all set up however you want it to be set up. Another feature that's built in here are gestures for the fingerprint scanner. I think I showed you already, right? So if you um, use the gesture, you can use it to get an overview over your notifications because for 6.3 inches, it's really yeah quite tall, taller than my hand certainly is here. Um, I would normally hold it like this and then my thumb just isn't long enough to go to the notifications that easily and that's 
where you can use the gestures built into the fingerprint scanner. Um, pretty much all Huawei phones with the fingerprint scanner support gestures at, yeah, at some level. Um, you can also use it to swipe through the gallery a bit. So the gestures for the fingerprint scanner are quite nice. As I said, there's also facial recognition built in. And yeah, I certainly have to try out the cameras more and obviously do more gaming tests since this is a gaming smartphone. This is just an unboxing and uh, first impressions are pretty good, especially at this price. We get quite, quite nice high quite nice high-end hardware, not super premium, but, but pretty high-end for just 329 euros. So first impressions are not bad at all. If you have any questions, anything I should try out, please write me in the comments. I will certainly try to play Fortnite on here. I already registered, but apparently Epic Games has to send me an email, an email um, for me to play it, which is a bit weird because I already played it on the Galaxy Tab S4. Um, but anyway, I hope I can try it out soon. Um, yes, yeah, I said, if you have any questions, write them down below. I'm NJ for mynexttablet.com. Thanks for watching.